Hello there and a very warm welcome to Channels Beam. I am Victor Mathias. Today on the program, our focus is on the online community in Nigeria, specifically if there is a need for a law to be passed to protect online rights and regulate the actions of those living in the social cyberspace. But before we begin, let's first take a look at what made the trends online in the past week. The founder and president of Chocolate City Entertainment, Audu Mekori, was arrested over alleged inciting comments and this hashtag flooded timelines. While some believed the arrest was unjust, others, however, felt it was a step in the right direction. And with the economy still down south, Tweeps have been advocating for the purchase of locally made goods so as to boost the economy and hopefully quench the insatiable thirst for products outside the shores of the country. Well, those were the trends, but let's now join our online contributors. Well, Abu Siddiq joins us from Abuja. Thanks for coming on the program. Good, good day. And Henry Okiri also joins us from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory. Thanks for having me today. Thanks as well for joining us. Henry, let me begin with you. What would you advocate for? A law and protection of rights online or a social media law? We, we, we have laws protect people's rights already. What we need to do is just uh, accept the fact that we're in a new age where a new type of medium, medium is available for people to, to express opinions and, and to make their thoughts about issues known. Now, some people use this medium for, for good while others use it and uh, cause discomfort. So I think that is where uh, rights come in and laws or a law that protects online might become necessary. And, and this, and this uh, law would not just uh, be limited to our interactions, our engagements online extend to the things that we do electronically offline. So it, it, it necessarily should not be an online protection law, a law protecting the rights of, of citizens in the internet age. This will include data protection laws, laws that protect people from defamation, slander, libel, online, laws that, go, that protect the government, and laws that protect the government. It, it's about time we accept the fact that things have moved from the traditional ways where someone can only slander or defame you offline. It can now be done online and done anonymously too. I largely agree with um, Henry that... Um... The, the traditional media, as we used to know it, is no longer in vogue. We, we now have uh, a new media, which is um, a new system of uh, information dissemination entirely. And um, as a result of that, there is need for the right of persons to be protected from from um likely abuses and like you said the new media can be used for good can be used for bad 
So there is need for um, people who are using this um, medium to be protected. And there's also the need for people who, whom the medium is being used against to also be protected. So I, I, I think I largely agree with his position. Well, Harry, you, you made mention of discomfort being caused by individuals, be it anonymously or otherwise. How can this issue be resolved? So our law enforcement is the first uh, uh, line of protection. They need to get training. They need to get the exposure. They need to begin to form strategic relationships with, with foreign entities who are in charge of platforms. Then beyond that, our, our judiciary also. The judiciary needs the support from the lawmakers to have laws that they can actually point to. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I go to court today. I can actually win a case by saying XYZ came on Twitter and lied against me. XYZ came on Twitter and accused me of something I did not do. XYZ published something on Facebook, which is not true. If we can't find out who XYZ is, and there are no laws that enable XYZ, XYZ will just continue to play God online and going to destroy people. So we need law enforcement needs to de develop and catch up with the with present day ways of doing things, we need we need we need new laws. And when I say new laws, not necessarily uh, 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 brand new laws, but maybe amendments of existing laws to also capture this of doing things. But, but what is the practice in other countries? Well, in other countries, if you look, if you if you go through, for example, Twitter's uh, uh, TOC terms and and conditions. Yeah, they say you can actually, law enforcement can actually for certain information about certain individuals service. For example, let's take, let's take one of the many anonymous accounts on Twitter that cost trouble. Twitter knows where this uh, 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 where these uh, things are, are, being, are being published from. And with IP, an IP address, you can actually trace someone. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Twitter has details down to the MAC address, that's down, down to the address of the device or computer that such is coming out from. Law enforcement agent, um, uh, at the point where they know who to call and what to ask. They can easily uh, catch up with people who, who abuse their own rights and abuse other people's rights online. And this will serve as deterrence because when you, when you shut them down, when you bring them to book, other people will think twice before... before Facebook has, has brought in a lot of... Uh, innovation, like people who troll people online who cause discomfort, they will begin to take them down. If that persists, law enforcement abroad has a way of catching up with those people. So that's, that's the best practice. That is how it happens in other places, which we should also uh, adopt. All right, well, we have people that pick up information within the moment on social media, like you said. Uh, one thing you've been able to establish that it is unique, but at times with most most of the times, I beg your pardon, with the best intentions, but yet cause discomfort and or trouble. How do we clear the dust this could raise at particular times? Well, um, social media is, 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 a, is a moment thing. So if it happens that moment, um, there's really no way you can douse the tension. But I think um, the way out of it is that um, people need to be very careful of um, information that they put out. They need to verify information that they put out. Because um, once you put it out, it's, it's spontaneous. It begins to, uh, you put it on Twitter, for example, I retweet, another person retweets. Before you know it, 
it has gone far and wide. So um, because of this, it is very, very important that you verify the information that you are putting out so that you do not um, uh, fall victim of um, someone that is promoting fake news and you do not your, you, you do not use your fake news to 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 to, to create problem and um, a way out of that is that people needs to be held responsible for 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 pushing um, contents of this nature of course um, people who genuinely push out contents should also be protected but um, that should not um, that should not be a basis for anyone to just push out um, any kind of information without verifying whether it is true or not. So the, the, the way out of it really is that people need to be very careful. People need to be sure of what information they are pushing out before they push it out. Because unlike the traditional media where you, I mean, you have the luxury of time for people to to digest whatever information you put out or for the information to even go as far as you want it to go it doesn't happen with the social media with the social media it's within a minute five minutes it's already everywhere and then um, the reactions from it can is almost always spontaneous so care is um what we need to apply in situations like I take it simple. Freedoms of any kind comes with responsibility. Yes, we are all free, especially in a democracy, to express our thoughts, to express our opinions without fear of anyone trying to, to stymie us. But we also owe it to ourselves and to other people the responsibility of of, of, of applying caution to our, our opinion. Yes, like you said, some people push out content intentions. And there are also people who push out content violent uh, intentions. They know it is not true and they want to do it to cause havoc. Like uh, Abdul Siddiq said, people should be allowed to take responsibility for what they do. If you have freedom of expression and you express, freedom, express uh, freedom of opinion and you express that opinion and it turns out your opinion is a fraud, turns out your opinion is filled with falsehood and your opinion is capable of causing a breach of public peace, then law enforcement also have a freedom protected by various laws to bring you in, investigate your motives, and decide if you have done it in good faith or you did it intentionally to, call, to, cause, to cause havoc. All right, guys, that's all we can take at this moment on the program. Thanks for coming and sharing your thoughts, but then we'll have to leave it here. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back shortly with another perspective. Stay with us.